All right, welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today we're going to talk about Open Media Vault. I want to give this a shot. Uh, I'm kind of sick of, uh, of of TrueNAS and uh, and Unraid, and I want to see is Open Media Vault actually going to be something useful to me. At the end of the day, all I want is a place to hold my files that's not on my main computer, and uh, yeah, let's uh, and I, I just want something easy to use. So let's let's give uh, Open Media Vault a try. So in this video, we're going to put some hardware together. We're gonna get a Open Media Vault installation media ready. We're gonna install it, and then we're gonna log into the console and configure Open Media Vault together, and hopefully get it up and running. So stick around, stay tuned, and uh, let's get right at it. All right, for this build, I'm just gonna use my. Uh, my old Power Edge 510. Uh, <clears throat> it's uh, it's pretty old, but that's fine. And uh, it'll support uh, four uh, drives. I'm gonna have uh, whatever, 16 gigs of RAM, 10 gig NIC. And uh, yeah, that should pretty much uh, suffice for the uh, Open Media Vault. So yeah, I'll just uh, I'll just slap this thing together and I'll just bring you back when we're ready to put the flash drive in. Okay, I've got all the hardware installed. Uh, I just put a 120 gig SSD for a boot drive. We've got our Open Media Vault flash drive. I think we're ready to rock and roll. Okay, so we are going to do uh, the back USB storage media, so that's good. Let's give that a shot. There's Open Media Vault, nice. Hopefully I don't need a mouse. I can't remember. Probably can just use the keyboard anyway. Okay, so English, sure. United States, sure. American English, why not? Now, there's my 10 gig mix going by, the ENPs. Good. Okay, so we're going to choose the, uh, I believe it's the, uh, yeah, it's number one. So that's, that is our, uh, I'll just call it, it's not really a management interface, but I'm just going to call it that because that's the one I'll use to connect just to uh, the URL that you manage this thing from. And then I'll, I usually create manual uh, mapped drive, not manual, that's not the right word. I usually um, map a drive to the server over the 10 gig NIC so that uh, I know for a fact I'm using that. Okay, so we made it past the, uh, the network configuration and host name. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna call it uh, KM Vault. It doesn't really matter. Actually, I'll leave it all lowercase, km-vault, and continue. Uh, dot .local is fine. Okay, now we're going to give it a root password. And retype it. All right, mountain time. Okay, so now we have to pick where we're going to install it to. So it should give us a list of uh, devices. All right, so I'm going to install it to this 128 gig Samsung drive. There's the four eight terabyte drives. This is the, uh, the USB boot media that I have installed. So we're going to choose the uh, solid state. All right, so let's uh, let the sucker reboot. All right, we're booting into uh, Open Media Vault right now. All right, so here we go. The rest of this is going to be done over on the computer. This is my uh, IP address, 10.0.0.147. Don't worry, it's totally fine to tell you that because it's uh, it's a private um address that there's probably 
hundred thousand other places out there that have that same address because it's you know private all right so let's head over to the computer and we'll log into this open media vault installation for the first time all right so here we are i've typed in the uh ip address of the server that was listed on the screen and you get to the login screen uh default username is admin default password is open media vault and let's log in let's get rid of my uh last pass prompts here all right so let's just poke around a little bit uh we have a dashboard uh we need to set it up so uh let's go ahead and uh go to the settings page so let's get a cpu utilization disk temperatures uh let's do a i don't know let's do a file table or a file systems uh load network interfaces uh displays in a grid sure uh system time sure why not let's see if there's updates available system information okay let's just see how that looks okay so there is our dashboard uh, so we've got 15.62 gigs of ram we've got our system information over here this is a this is a uh, dual CPU Xeon that has two quad core CPUs. Uh, this is our current interface. Uh, this one here will be our 10 gig NIC once we configure it. And this is our disk temperatures. So there's our four 8 terabyte drives. There's our boot drive. Not sure why it doesn't show a temp, but that's fine. Who cares? It's an SSD. And there are no file systems. And here's our system time, which is pretty well correct. And okay, so now uh, I think we have some updates. So I will um, not actually sure how to update to tell you the truth maybe it's over here somewhere update updates and let's just uh install all the updates and confirm okay so i'll just bring you back once all these updates are done all right here we go we're done so let's click close and uh this is this is the uh thing i like about open media vault when you're working in the submenus and doing things and you've made a change, it tells you that you have to apply the settings. And I really appreciate that because there's nothing worse than doing something and, and especially if you're new or you're unsure of what's going on and you've just spent some time configuring something and then you move to a new page or a new something and what you've done isn't applied. So we'll apply this. Okay. So, what next? Uh, we're going to be doing um, a network share, and I'm going to be using SMB. So, probably, we should check out the settings. So, okay, it looks like we need to actually turn SMB on. So, I'm going to do that. And then here we go again. See, it tells you, you've got a pending configuration change. You need to apply it. Um, would this get annoying after a while? Maybe, but at this point, because I'm, I'm brand spanking new to open media vault. Like I said, I, I fired it up on a, on a VM once just to kind of have a look at the installation process, but that's as far as I went. So let's apply this. Okay, so let's look at our um, storage because, you know, we need to have uh, storage set up before we can have a share, right? So go to our disks and here's our four uh, eight terabyte 
disks. Okay, so now how do we create uh, an array? Uh, which is a good question. Do we just have to select them all? I don't know. I have four selected, but that doesn't seem to have done anything. Okay, so what we actually need to do here, uh, we need to go to system and plugins, and we need to install um, the... Uh, Open Media Vault multi multiple device uh, plugin. So let's do that. The UI reloads. Let's go back to storage. Okay, here's our multiple device. So now we're going to create. Uh, I'm going to do a RAID 10 and I'm going to select the devices. This is better. Okay. And then I'm going to click save. And now I'm going to apply this. Okay, so now we'll go to file systems. And we're going to create a file system. I'll use uh, XFS. And this is our RAID volume right here. And I'm going to click save. Okay, so... I'm going to, uh, before I create a shared folder, I'm going to create a user. So I'm going to create a user for me. So let's put my name. I don't need email. I'm going to put my password. Good. And we can leave groups alone for now. And we'll click save. Good, and we'll apply this change. Yes. Okay, so now let's go to storage. Let's go to shared folders. Let's create a shared folder. I'm just going to call this uh, KM Share. And we're going to select our file system. And Administrator will be read write, users will be read write, others will be read only. So I think that's good enough for now. I'm going to click save. Okay, and I'm going to apply this. Okay, so now let's go to uh, a file explorer. And let's put in, uh, what was it, dot 147, 147, backslash. Okay, so here we go. Let's see if we can create a new, it looks like we cannot create a new folder. We do uh, just a KM share. No. Okay, so why don't we do this? Let's go to Map Network Drive. First of all, let's copy this. Let's go to Map Network Drive. Let's paste this in. Connect using different credentials. Finish. So that was just my name, my password, and it doesn't like it. Okay, so let's find out why. Why doesn't it like it? Let's have a look at our shared folders again. Uh, so there's our shared folder. Let's go to permissions. So me, uh, I'm going to do read write. Oh, okay, that makes sense. And I'm going to save it. And I'm going to apply it. Okay, let's go back to this. Uh, this is the ACL, so I have read write. I'm not sure if we really need to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. And I'll click save. 
Okay, so let's see if that made any difference. Let's go to Map Network Drive. Let's paste this in. And let's just put this in. Okay, can we do it up here? And okay, so we still have some sort of weird problem here. We have to figure out why. So there's our file system. Uh, services, uh, SMB is still enabled, yes. Uh, oh, let's do the home directory thing here. I think this is what... Can't share user home directory because they are not enabled. So, let's go look at the share again. Oh, hold on a second here. I think I see what's going on. Let's go to, let's go back to storage. Let's go to shared folders. I think we can actually just delete this. And let's go to shares here. Let's apply this. I think I see what's going on now. I think this is a bit of a, over, not an oversight, but a little bit of confusion on my part. So if we go to SMB and then shares, and now we create a share. Okay, so there is, we're going to enable it, select... A shared folder. We'll just call it KM share again. Oops, let's try that again. A file system will be that. Okay, and let's save. Okay, and let's apply that. Good. And I don't think I need to, I think I already clicked save, didn't I? Yeah, I did. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So let's go back to shares. Let's do a refresh. Did that not save or what? AM share. Okay, save. Oh, there we go. That was weird. It didn't didn't save the first time. And we'll apply that. And yes. Okay, so let's go to the file explorer. Let's type in this. Ah, there's the KM share. Okay, so it's working. Uh, can I do a new folder? Yes. Can I delete this folder? Yes. Okay, so looking at the uh, at the share under the SMB, so there it is. If we go back up to uh, storage and shares, it shows up here. So I was able to go in here and give myself read write and click save. So that's good. So now let's see if we can map this thing. Uh, so map network drive, paste it in. I'm going to connect using different credentials. I'll put my open media vault username and password and click OK. And boom, there we go. We have our network share. Okay, so we have ourselves a share set up. It's functioning. I've got it mapped in, uh, in my file manager here. So now what I want to do is I want to set up my 10 gig connection between my main machine and the server. So let's go to interfaces. And here's our built-in gigabit that I'm using to administer this machine. So let's create one. Uh, Ethernet sounds like what is what we want. Uh, we're going to do the, it's the ENP 3S devices. So I'm going to use the device zero. Um, IPv4, we're going to do static. I'm going to do a private class B address, so 172.16.0. And I'm going to make this uh, dot three. And we'll do a 20, we'll do a 16 
bit mask, but I'm not exactly sure what they're looking for. Are they looking for slash 16? Or I guess it would be slash 16. Oops. Or are they just looking for 255.255.0.0? I'm going to try it like that. Gateway 172. I don't think we actually need the gateway, but I'm just going to put it in anyway. 0. Dot, we'll just call it 1. And let's see if it's going to like what it sees. Uh, so that's its address. That's its whatever. Okay, let's click apply. Yes. Okay, so now what I need to do is actually shut down my the computer that I'm using to record this, and I need to install the 10 gig NIC in my machine. So give me, well, I'll see you in two seconds. Okay, so here we go. Um, I have rebooted my main machine. I've logged back into the Open Media Vault dashboard. Um, obviously, I've got the NIC installed in my computer. So we can see we have a connection, although the, on the my computer side, it's not done. So let's bring up the network and internet advanced settings. So here is the 10 gigabit NIC. Uh, zero should be this one. So let's go to uh, more adapter options. Yeah, there we go. This is what we want. Uh, TCP four and let's give it our addresses. So I gave the server 172.16.0.3. So I'm going to give this one 172.16.0.2. Uh, yep. And then that's a 16 bit mask 172.16.0.1. Uh, DNS, I'm just going to throw in just whatever, uh, cloud fair one dot one dot one dot one. I mean, I don't, it doesn't matter. We're not going to use it. So I'll just put something there anyway. All right. Click. Okay. Click close. So now let's open a command prompt and can we ping 172.16.0.3? That's the server and we can. Okay. So that's a good sign. All right. Uh, can I rename this? Uh, that was uh, this here. Let's rename. Let's call this uh, 10 uh, GBE LAN. Save. Okay, good. And so let's go back to the Open Media Vault. So in theory, we should be good. Let's go to uh, network interfaces. I don't know if this is going to tell us anything relevant, but show details. I guess, I guess we'll just say it's connected. Okay. Let me try this. Let's go to uh, 172.16.0.3 backslash km share and it works okay so i'm going to actually disconnect this because we don't need it anymore okay and i'm going to go back and map network drive map network drive so now we're going to go backslash backslash 172.16.0.3 backslash km share that's not how you spell KM, KM share, KMA share, connect using different credentials, uh, put my username, my name, my password. Let's remember that. Click OK. Boom. OK. So now let's do something. Let's get rid of this file explorer. I want to go to uh export let's take this six gigabyte file and copy it to here but first of all i want to go to the dashboard i just want to see what it looks like and let's go back to this 
Uh, let's just make a folder. Uh, we'll just call it temp. And let's go in it and let's put this down here. So now I got to figure out where am I going to be looking here. So we have our load, CPU utilization, memory. Uh, so anyway, let's just paste it here and see what happens. So our speed is not great. Uh, I was expecting a little better than that. That's, that's basically what happens with gigabit speeds. Interesting. Uh, I need to check the link speed, I think. So let's go to the Windows side first. And let's go to advanced. So this is a, additional properties, link speed, additional properties. Uh, it is set to 10 gigabit per second. Okay, so on the Windows side, it is set correct. Um, is Open Media Vault going to give me some sort of indication of what it is set at? All right, uh, I did a bunch of digging around. I, I can't seem to find a way to show the link speed in Open Media Vault. So I'm just going to say it's it's set to 10 gigabits per second because on the Windows side it says it is. So obviously the other end has been negotiated the same. It has to be, right? Um, the transfer speeds are not what I was expecting. Um, I did uh, off-camera set up an FTP um, server on this. So under uh, services, uh, FTP has been set up. So I've, I've got a FTP set up and I can connect to it with, uh, with FileZilla. And if I take, uh, let's say this folder here and I upload it, uh, you can see that the speed starts off awesome. It was like 1.1 gigabit per second and then it drops off. Um, I think that's purely just uh, because of the speed of the hard drives that is in the server. I do have a RAID 10, which in theory is a RAID 1 plus RAID 0, right? So it's a mirrored RAID. It's a, yeah, mirrored RAID 1. Um, <clears throat> but um, this is a far cry from, say, Unraid or TrueNAS uh, over 10 gig. I'm actually, I'm just going to be fine with this. I, I may m mess around and look and see if there's something I can do later. Uh, like I said at the beginning of the video, you know, TrueNAS and Unraid, uh, I've used them both. I own an Unraid license. Uh, they're definitely um, very robust network attached storage solutions. But honestly, for what I'm doing, they're really heavy for me. Uh, there's just too much about it. And I mean, all I want is a place to dump my files. And Open Media Vault, uh, so far, seems like it is exactly what I want. And it's uh, free, and it runs well on this uh, Dell R510 server that I have. The upload speeds, eh, it's... It's not that bad. I mean, in previous videos on the channel, I, I had wanted to uh, edit rate from the server. There was issues with that with both TrueNAS and Unraid. So, um, in TrueNAS, uh, I think it was TrueNAS. It, it might have been Unraid. I'm, I'm actually kind of forgetting now. But you, you, have, you had like your SSD cache, right? And your new files would go to when you would upload them to the server they'd go to your ssd 
and it was wicked fast. Like you, I was getting eight and nine hundred megabytes per second transfer speeds, which is awesome. The problem is, is that the mover would move those files after a bit to your main sort of, you know, spinning storage, right? And then if you wanted to edit something the next day, while well, you're stuck at the speed that the drives themselves can and give you and so therefore i couldn't actually edit from the server and so if that was on i can't remember it's been too long now uh the same um issue was on true nas as well so it ended up being i can't actually edit from the server so that's kind of a moot point so then i thought you know what i just want a server that's easy to set up and easy to use and it doesn't have all kinds of freaking complicated BS, you know, that I, I was able to overcome some of the things, you know, like TrueNAS and Unraid, there's a pretty steep learning curve. Uh, as you saw with Open Media Vault, I had to do a bunch of clicking around. Um, I did do one Google search, but ultimately for me, it was actually quite easy to set up. So, you know, I, I have a share. Uh, I even, well, that's FTP, but I have a... Um, I have an SMB share and I can map it in my computer. Uh, I, I just wanted to mess around with FTP to see if it would be any faster and it starts off a lot faster, but I think we're much, we're really limited to the, to the speed of the storage pool, right? Or the RAID or whatever you want to call it. So having said that, I think I'm fine with this. I think it's a great uh solution for somebody who just wants a share uh, a network share or a network attached storage it it honestly wasn't hard to set up uh it looks to me like there's a million resources out on the internet for open media vault if you run into a problem or need to look something up like i'm an, i'm no by no means an expert but when I look through some of these things, I know what they are. I know what they do. I, I have a general idea of what I'm doing when I'm setting it up. Um, there, it, it, it's more like the quirks of Open Media Vault itself that I, I was unsure of. But um, yeah, anyway, there you go. Hope you enjoyed it. If, uh, if you want to set up a quick and easy network attached storage, Open Media Vault seems like, uh, like it's the real deal. I'm going to use this for a while and just see how it goes. Uh, I do have a large drive where I backed up my Unraid. Uh, every um, every bit of data from my Unraid was backed up onto just a single disk. I'm going to connect it and um, and sync it to this Open Media Vault, and then just I'm just going to use this for a while and see how it goes. So thank you very much for watching. If you made it this far, you're a rock star. Uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, as it sits right now. Uh, more than 60% of people who watch don't subscribe. Uh, it would mean a lot if you'd give me a subscription, help me grow this channel. And uh, yeah, we'll see you all in the next one.